let's get this thing going and i hope you guys enjoy it let's get started okay i always start off my presentations with this the key to controlling any pest is knowing all you can about that pest and what that is that's research that's uh, digging into the manuals the books uh, learning what you can about their biology and stuff once you do that you can come up with a strategy to control these pests that you're dealing with on a daily basis. And remember, for no pests, you have to know pests. You guys with me here? Hopefully, yes. So let's go ahead and move on. Now, looking at this, you know, a lot of people have a, a fear of spiders. And I, I, it's, it, it is a, uh, a primitive fear because, uh, you know, spiders aren't all that scary, although this one you're looking at here might be, look a little scary. That is actually a trapdoor spider from the Kentucky area. And yeah, it looks kind of mean. It's got these big old fangs here and then the petty pulps up here. This happens to be a male. This is uh, where um, she, he uh, injects his uh, sperm into the female. So anyway, it does look scary, but uh, these are pretty much harmless. They're in the uh, tarantula family, by the way. And then we have this one right here that looks a little scary too. And uh, I put this on my page when Halloween comes around because it kind of reminds me of the mask of, of, uh, of Jason. You know, on, uh, I think it's Friday 13th. You have the eyes and the nose and you have the mouth. And by the way, these spines that you see, uh, they are sharp. If you were to pick up this spider and squeeze, it would break the skin. Now in nature, nature has a way of, you know, protecting uh, these little critters by making them look bigger sometimes or uh, scarier than they really are. And in this case, it looks like it has a couple of big eyes. So a lot of uh, predators may look at this and go, I don't know if I want to tangle with that. Plus you have the, uh, the spikes there as well. So, but those are two scary looking spiders, but uh, check this one out. Now, now that, that that's kind of cute, isn't it? Now, come on, you guys have to admit that is a cute spider. Yeah, that is a species of lynx spider. And this spider actually is probably maybe four millimeters long. It's pretty small. I was surprised when I found this on a stalk of, um, it was a weed out in the woods. I was doing a, um, what they call a, uh, a bio blitz when I found this one. That's a cute spider. So yeah, there's some cute ones out there. You guys have probably seen that jumping spider on, uh, on Facebook and some other places too. I can't recall the spider's name right now. And then you have this one here. This is a, uh, a um, crab spider of some sort, very cute. So I'm showing you these just basically, if you have the fear of spiders, maybe it'll uh, help uh, lessen that fear. And that's something that you have to deal with when you when you're dealing with your customers, because when a customer sees a spider, the first thing they want to do is kill it. And yeah, we're here to control spiders. And we're going to talk about that a little later. But we're also here to educate our customers as well, because not all spiders need to be controlled. They're actually helping you as a pest control uh, technician, uh, a manager to uh, control some of the pests that you have to deal with. So I, I put this page up here. This is a photograph of my wife holding a big old uh, federally protected indigo snake. And the reason why I put this here is because the, the fear of snakes and also the fear of spiders, it's a primitive fear that has been passed down from generation to generation to generation through thousands of years. And it's, it's a taught fear, and which probably has become, uh, you know, pretty well entrenched in our minds that, hey, don't touch that spider, it's going to kill you or that snake. But I just put this in here to show you that uh, my wife is five foot tall and she's handling a threatened species uh, with a permit, by the way, and uh, that thing is seven foot two inches long. Its name is Jaws. Every year when they do the survey up in Georgia, this is one of them that they find. Uh, the reason why they call it Jaws, because the first person that found this snake was actually bit by it or bitten by it. So, <laughs> but uh, she's not worried at all. So remember, it's a primitive fear. And uh, with education, uh, you can actually um, ease 
the minds of your customers when it comes to spiders. So let's go ahead and get going here. Let's talk about the uh, general exterior uh, and uh, external, I should say, uh, anatomy of spiders. And so what you have here, this is called a flatty. And so uh, I'm thinking that you guys can see my, my cursor moving around. I, I hope so anyway. So we have uh, the abdomen here and the uh, cephalothorax. You notice that spiders, they don't have three parts like an insect. You know, the insect has the, the head, thorax, and the abdomen. But in this case, it's just the cephalothorax is the head and the, uh, the, the thorax section in one, and then you have the abdomen. Now, all spiders have eight legs. And uh, as far as eyes are concerned, um, most spiders have um, four sets, eight eyes altogether. But there are a few species out there that have only uh, three sets of eyes, uh, six eyes. And we'll talk about that in a little while. So we have that. And uh, let's go ahead and go to the next slide here. And uh, this shows uh, some more parts. We have the pedipops right here. Um, both male and female have the pedipops. Uh, some people say that, or look at a spider and they say, well, honey, it's got 10 legs, but it actually doesn't. Uh, these aren't what we would call a true leg. And then we have our fangs here. Uh, that's the part that the spider uses to inject the venom. And then the jaws, and this is where the venom is actually kept in uh, some spider species, not all, but some of them. So, because uh, there are some spiders out there that have no venom at all. One species that, that uh, are actually found in, in the uh, States. So we have that and there's the underside. We have the spinnerets right there, spiracles. This is how they breathe. This is where the, the spider breathes from. Spinnerets, that's where the web, the webbing is, is uh, actually um, uh, uh, you know, put out. And then your book lung slits right here, uh, sternum. And then we have the epigenome. And this is, it happens to be a female. This is where all that happens when uh, mating takes place. So now you have an idea of the parts of the spider. Uh, if, uh, by, by the way, I didn't say this at first, but you know, uh, if you see something on here that's important to you, get your phone out and take a picture of it. Uh, I, I take notes and I take photographs of, uh, of uh, you know, when I go to a, a, you know, have a, when I'm out in the audience uh, as a uh, participant, this is what I do. Now, now, let me see here. I got to move this thing out of the way if I can. Yeah, there we are. Okay. Now, worldwide, they estimate about 46,000 of spider species that have already been described. And there's probably more out there that haven't been described yet. And as time goes by, we have entomologists and, and uh, others out there, biologists that actually describe uh, species when it's uh, newly found. So somebody has to go through that. And there's only about 200 species that have been uh, basically where they're uh, uh, medically uh, of concern to humans. Uh, and that's only about 200 out of 46,000. That's a pretty good ratio. I think we're, we'll be all right. And here in North America, we only have the widow and the recluse spiders that we have to deal with. Now, almost all spiders have venom, but like I said earlier, there's a couple species, no one species, actually a, a genus that does not ha have uh, venom. And one interesting fact about spiders is that they do control the amount of venom they put in their victim. And the reason why, you know, they don't want to waste all that venom on a small insect that they, you know, want to uh, feed on. Now, if the insect is larger, they'll inject more venom, which is, uh, you know, snakes do the same thing. So that's, that's, a, that's, that's a pretty good uh, thing to know. Yeah, let's see here. Oh, for some reason, I am not forwarding. There we go. Now, in the case you're out there and you have a customer that says they've been bitten by a spider, it's very important that that spider 
be retained, uh, you know, uh, whether it's smushed or whole, it, it, you need to have that for positive identification by somebody that knows what they're doing. And uh, don't rely on a, the doctor to tell you uh, what has bitten your customer or because we all get these photographs sometimes from customers of a sore on an arm or a leg. And I got to tell you that uh, there's nobody that can look at a, a sore on the leg and tell you why it's there uh, as far as that being a, a, a bite from an insect with maybe the exception of a fire ant. That's pretty obvious, but uh, doctors really do not know, you know, they, they have no idea. They guess. So there's a lot of uh, blisters or necrotic lesions out there that are diagnosed as spider bites. And we hear it all the time. But um, truth of the matter, matter is spiders rarely bite. Uh, you may hear about spider biting people all the time, but a lot of times it's something else. It could be a staph infection, uh, could be sporal trichosis, which is a uh, something you get from actually working in the garden with roses. It's a you, you prick your finger or you scratch your arm, and next thing you know, you have a secondary infection going on, and it had nothing to do with uh, with an insect spite or a spider bite at all. So, and the truth of the matter is, and this is truth the the truth when it comes to uh, either. Uh, widows or or even recluse spiders and many other spiders that we deal with on a daily basis is that their fangs are too small to actually even penetrate our skin by just walking over and deciding to go ahead and take a, a bite they can't do it uh it has uh, the spiders including the recluse has to be pressed up against your skin in order to uh to allow the fangs to penetrate the skin and that is research that's science that's not me. Uh, I'm just passing along the truth when it comes to, uh, to spider bites. So that should tell you right there that spider bites are extremely rare. So, uh, you know, you hear about spider bites all the time, but uh, most of the time, no, uh, it's something else. Now, let's go ahead and uh, talk about widows, the widow spiders. Now, we have... Uh, four native species in the United States. We have the uh, Southern Black Widow, which is uh, found pretty much throughout the Southeast and actually up the East Coast as well, uh, up into uh, some of the Plains area, uh, you know, Illinois, Indiana, uh, stuff, places like that. Then we have the Northern Black Widow, which we actually have down here in Florida as well and the western black widow and then we have a widow spider that is really a pretty spider it's called the red widow now the red widow is only found in florida in sand hill habitat i got a photograph of it that i'll show you all in a little bit now the red or reddish hourglass on the bottom side of the widow spiders that's how you identify which spider you're dealing with and there's some markings on top as well but the hourglass is the key uh, one thing to remember also when it comes to uh, the brown widow, which is an introduced species, their egg sac has little orbs on it, little spikes. And um, uh, while the other widow spiders, the, the egg is uh, usually round, but there's no spikes. It's smooth. So, and, you know, I have some photos of that as well. So let's go ahead and move on here. There is your uh, male black widow. It's, it's pretty, look at that. Nice black and red. The red the legs have some red bands on it and some black bands. It's just a good looking spider in, in my opinion. You guys may not think so and your customer may not, may not think so, but hey, I, I do. And that's all that matters to me <laughs> anyway. So that's the male. And here's a Southern black widow. And if you look at the, the hourglass and I have another photograph that I'm gonna show you but you'll see that this hourglass is full. It is a full size hourglass with no split or anything. And it is red. It is solid red. And there you go. There's a uh, up close or close enough photograph of one. Notice that the egg sac does not have spikes on it at all. It's smooth. So that is the uh, uh, Southern Black Widow. 
Now, on occasion, you may see a southern black widow with a couple of red spots on the upper side of the abdomen. That's not unusual, especially in an early stage before the final adult molt. Uh, you may see those red spots, and some of them, even as a full adult, will uh, have those red spots as well. So it's not unusual at all. So that's your uh, southern black widow. And uh, here's your northern. The northern is kind of unique because it has this red arrow right here and uh, it kind of points to a heart. <laughs> so the first time I photographed these were up in the panhandle of Florida. And uh, you know, in Florida, they hang around the edges of low trees, shrubbery and stuff, and they make their web uh, in, in the end of a branch. Uh, and uh, while further up north, they could be under rocks or, you know, bark or something like that. But here in Florida, that's what they do. So, and then there's the underside. And as you notice here, it has a split in the hourglass, while the southern has no split at all. It's one large piece. So that's probably something that you didn't know. So hopefully you, uh, this is new to you. And because uh, yeah, I don't know what you don't know. And so uh, the stuff that I'm showing you, you may know and you may not. So uh, hopefully everyone here will leave today with some uh, general knowledge of, of spiders that you didn't know. So, and there's the top again. Remember that, that arrow there, the heart. And sometimes there's an extra dot as well. Take note of the... Uh, um, what do you call it? The, the egg sack right here. So, and let's go ahead and go to the brown widow. Now, I don't have a, a photograph of the underbelly, but this one here still shows uh, pretty much what it looks like. The hourglass is a reddish orange color and uh, it's three quarter size. It's not a full hourglass like it is in the, uh, the Southern. It has a portion of it, and then you have a larger, it's three quarter size. Uh, many times you'll see that it is brown and you'll see banding on the legs as you see here. And uh, now sometimes there's some phases of this, the, the brown widow that is so dark uh, that they look like a black widow. So the, the only way you can actually determine which one it is, is to look at the hourglass or to find egg sacs. If you find uh, the egg sac with the orbs on it, then you know you're dealing with uh, the brown widow. And that's what the egg sac looks like. Pretty uh, round, but has these tiny little soft spikes. They're, they're not real spikes, they're, just, they're soft orbs like, is what I call them. So, all right. Now this is the red widow that I spoke of a minute ago. Uh, these are only found here in Florida in scrub habitat, in uh, a few of the sand hill habitats that we have here. And uh, I've been fortunate enough to find these. They're, they're uncommon uh, and uh, hard to find. Uh, this year was pretty good for me though. I, I found several this year and was able to capture a few and take photographs. And I sent, sent some out to some other uh, biologists and such to do research on them. So that was kind of neat to get involved in that. So that's what it looks like. It's beautiful. Look at the, you know, it's got the red spots on it. The, the spots are sometimes bordered in yellow and the legs and the cephalothorax here is, uh, is red. So perfect, beautiful spider. Okay, let's talk about their venom. The venom is a neurotoxin. And what that means, it affects the nervous system. It doesn't uh, eat tissue. Uh, doesn't cause uh, boils of blood or you know tissue failure, but what it does, it gives a uh, painful rigidity in the abdominal muscles right around your gut area, uh, tightness in the chest, uh, blood pressure will will increase. You'll have a rise in body temperature, uh, nausea, sweating. Sounds like the common cold to me. So uh, or Omicron. <laughs> virus that's been going on. By the way, that hit me during uh, Christmas. It was no fun, but uh, hey, I managed and I'm still alive. So that's a good thing. Now I want you to look at the bottom bullet here. No deaths have been reported 
to the American Association of Poison Control Centers since it first, its first annual report back in 1983. And uh, so there are no reported deaths of, uh, of, from widow spiders. Yes, there are some bites and some, uh, some of the, that's how they get the, uh, um, the symptoms. And so there has to be some bites, but nobody has died from them. So that's a good thing to know. And that's something that you can pass on to your customers too. Uh, because uh, the, the, the black widow actually serves a, a pretty good purpose. They, they eat roaches, that's for sure. They eat other spiders. Any insect that gets caught in their gnarly nest is going to be consumed. So, uh, but of course, I understand that the, the customer does not want them around their house. And uh, I can't really blame them, especially if they have children that could be playing with these spiders because uh, children are very, you know, uh, curious about things in their environment and they pick them up and, you know, we, we definitely don't want that. And um, having said that, um, the, the only people that are in danger of possibly getting very sick, even dying, would be the young, you know, kids. And I'm um, talking about maybe up to about five or six, seven, maybe 10 years old, and the elderly, uh, when you have uh, the immune system is not as strong. So that's the ones that you have to worry about. All right, we're going to talk about the recluse spider. Uh, this is the one that's feared by everybody. And it, to be truthful with you, the fear is actually unwarranted because uh, you see these photos on uh, Google, you know, when you do a, a, a search and you always see these necrotic wounds, that, you know, that look like hamburger on a thumb or on a leg or whatever the case may be. Well, that's a rare exception. It's not the rule. There's been people bitten by recluse spiders and all they get is a red whelp. Um, but some people could react and do react uh, differently. Um, it, it, it all depends on the person. Uh, and that's with a lot of things that, uh, you know, bite and sting us. Some people uh, have no reaction at all to uh, certain bites and other people react poorly. I know that when it comes to mosquitoes, they can bite me all day long. I don't like it. I can feel it depending on the species, but I don't react. I don't get a, a itchy bump like a lot of people do. But on the other hand, if you get chiggers on me, they drive me nuts. I'll get these whelps that itch for weeks, it seems. And then there's people that get, uh, you know, uh, stung by fire ants and they react poorly, poorly. Some people will actually go into anaphylactic shock uh, from bee stings and wasp stings. So uh, it all depends on the individual. So uh, uh, most of the time, the recluse bite is, uh, is not as severe as the media would let you uh, believe. So that's the actual size are pretty close to it. That is a male there. And uh, you can see Washington there. Uh, and uh, pretty much about the size of a quarter of stretched legs. Now, some can be a little larger, but for the most part, that's the average size. So uh, let's talk about the recluse spiders. There are six native species that are found in North America. The brown recluse is, has the largest range. They're they're, they're found in a large area. All you have to do is uh, Google uh, brown recluse and a lot of times that map will pop up and, um, and show you uh, the range of the, uh, of the brown recluse. Now we do have two introduced species and they are the Mediterranean recluse and the Chilean recluse. Now the Mediterranean recluse has been found in Florida, and they, they're in Louisiana, they're, they're found in a lot of port cities, uh, Tampa, Miami, Jacksonville, uh, St. Augustine, you know, I, I get a, a specimen sent to me from St. Augustine quite a bit, um, uh, Pensacola, uh, Mobile, you know, stuff like that. They come in on, on ships, excuse me, they come in on uh, in, in shipments and stuff. So they're, they're moved from their native area to uh, the U.S. through through shipping, and and there they have established 
some uh, colonies in different areas. Now the Chilean recluse, yeah, they're found once in a while in the US. The last one I remember was down in, uh, uh, I think it was Winter Park or Winter Haven, Florida. When I was with uh, Florida Pest Control, there was a, a family that moved in and had um, uh, tortoises and stuff. They were, by the way, they were entomologists from what I remember. And they had actually brought Chilean recluses with their packing, uh, you know, the stuff that they moved from South America up here. And through um, uh, the Dow Chemical, I think it was at the time, yeah, and they were still Dow and Florida Pest Control, we were actually able to go in there and eradicate that infestation uh, with fumigation. So, um, and, and that's been done before as well in some uh, situations where the Mediterranean recluse were found in high numbers. So uh, one of the key identification characteristics, of course, is the fiddle on the back. Everybody has seen that, but the main way to ID them is that they have three pair of eyes. And while most other spiders have a four pair, and you can see the three pair in this photograph right here. There's a, right there, you got one, two, three, four, five, six. Six eyes all together. You can see behind me uh, another photograph, which is that one right there. Well, actually this is a different one, but you can see the eyes real well in this one. And one, two, three, four, five, six. And then there's your fiddle shape. Now on occasion, depending on the species, because we have the desert uh, recluse that are found, um, New Mexico, Texas. Uh, and then we have the, uh, it's called the Apache that's found in uh, Southwest New Mexico and Southeast um, Arizona. I have photographs of those. And um, their hourglass is kind of faint. So what you want to look at are the, are the eyes and then the faint um, hourglass right there. So there you go. Next. Now, in this case, we have a, a cytotoxin here. And what that means, is it's, it's toxic to cells. And when you see those photographs on Google and stuff, that's because the, the, uh, the victim reacted poorly and the the venom is actually you know responding to the um the the the, the tissue causing uh the tissue to actually go necrotic and um it, it's pretty nasty uh um the tissue will die it'll turn black and die and uh, and it takes a long time to heal i've heard reports of it coming back and moving and all that i don't know how, how much truth that is um, if you want to dig into uh, 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 recluse, you know, just deep information, um, there's several, several papers out there by uh, Betters and G.B. Edwards and some others. And um, there's a fellow here in Florida right now doing research on, um, on, on widow spiders, not widows, uh, uh, recluse spiders. Now, here's something interesting. The only death reported is um, is actually very disputed. It's questionable. And I put a link there if you want to uh, get your phone and take a photograph of that and you can read the article because uh, uh, actually more than likely uh, there has been zero deaths, uh, mainly because of, um, uh, of, you know, the bites are so rare. Um, and in the case of this Florida man, <laughs> Florida man, get it, um, said he died, but the it was more than likely a staph infection because they couldn't find any signs of recluse spiders in the garage that they were, or carport that they were cleaning out. Um, so um, uh, it's, it's highly exaggerated out there as far as um, um, the deaths and stuff from uh, recluse spiders. If there is one out there, you guys saw my email at the beginning, send it to me, I'd love to know about it. And, uh, but so far, you know, the last I looked, there hasn't been any other than this disputed one here. So now here are some facts uh, about spiders in general. Now, many believe that spider bites are really common and it's just not true. It's not true. Spiders have no interest in us as, as food. Uh, they don't feed on human blood. Uh, they feed on insects and other invertebrate. Now, um, they, they will also feed on uh, larger things, I have seen some of the orb weavers feed on lizards and frogs 
that happen to get stuck in their webbing. So, um, you know, they, they are, they're opportunists. If they can overpower whatever gets stuck in their web, they're going to feed on it. Once again, the truth is spider bites are quite rare, and that is the reality of it. Um, and of course, I, I, I highly recommend and encourage you all to, you know, do your research out there on spiders, uh, because as a pest management professional or manager professional, you should be, you know, reading all you can about these things, because this is what comes up. When, when it comes to your customers, they want you to know everything you possibly can. Now, I've seen this happen. It hasn't happened to me, but I have seen this happen before where um, the, uh, uh, you, the homeowner, excuse me, something is, ah, there we go. Sorry about that. Um, anyway, the homeowner will get on Google or something else online and search something that they're seeing in their house pest wise. And when you go there, they'll ask you questions about that pest. And hopefully you know quite a bit about that pest because sometimes these homeowners will, I gotta tell you, because they did their research, they'll know more than you do. And that's embarrassing and very awkward. So that's why I said at the beginning for no pest, you have to know pest. K N O W. And so I, I, when I was training at Florida Pest Control, that's something that I uh, definitely pushed constantly, you know, get to know everything you can about these pests. All right. There are many insects that do sting. We're talking about mosquitoes, fleas, ticks, bed bugs. Yeah, you know, there's a ton of them out there. Uh, uh, you know, they, these actually do you know, sting you and bite you and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, and sometimes you re your body reacts to them. Now, other spiders, we have, uh, well, over 3,800 species in North America. And there's only 30 species that are known to be, uh, it's called synanthropic. And that, that means uh, lives in association with humans. These are the spiders that actually are in and around your house. And out of those, out of that uh, 30 or so, uh, a lot of them are exotic. In other words, they're not native. They just were brought here. And uh, since uh, they live in association with humans, they actually get moved around with humans. And that's why a lot of these spiders are found uh, throughout the U.S. And uh, it's because we move them around. They actually live with us. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, check it. Now, this is a spitting spider, and the one the reason why I put this one up here, if you notice, it is related to the uh, recluse because it has three pair of eyes. It has six eyes right here. These are very common, but notice the cethrothorax is massive, uh, and uh, they're of no danger to us, and the reason why, oh, but I just wanted to throw this in to show you the, how massive the, the cethrothorax it really is. And there's some eggs right here. This actually was in uh, the ESA, Entomological Society, calendar a few years ago. It was um, Miss January. <laughs> so anyway, uh, they actually spit out a goo. And I was taking a photograph of this one. And right as I was taking the photograph, it had spit out the goo and grabbed this fruit fly and pulled it up to... Uh, to uh, go ahead and in, uh, inject the venom and feed on this, this fruit fly. So these are spiders that you find in and around houses. The males I see a lot inside homes, but the females are usually outside. I don't know why that is, but um, they're just, they're, they look around. They, they're looking for their food. <laughs> How many of you all jumped out there? <laughs> Raise your hand. So... <laughs> That's just to keep you all awake. I hope it woke some of you up. It made me jump. I forgot it was there. So we have the uh, red house spider. This is probably the most common spider found inside people's homes. If you notice, it kind of looks like the red widow, but it's not. And it's a bit smaller. And the reason why I'm bringing this one up is because, um, you know, you move a piece of furniture 
and you see webbing around the leg of the furniture or you move something away from the wall, you know, bookcase, and you see webbing, it's usually this spider right here. The spider is also famous about making small webs in the corner of the windows and such. And um, it's, uh, it's doing its job and uh, it's moved around. This, this spider is found throughout the US and it's called the red house spider. Harmless, but it can be a pest. And there's another photo of it. And this one right here, this is called the Southern Crevice Spider. Um, that's the uh, female. And I know you guys have seen this before. If you go around the outside of, of a structure, you'll notice a, a gnarly looking web with a hole in the center in a corner. And that's why they call it a crevice spider. She will back up into that hole right there and wait for something to come out and, um, and, and then feed on it, jump on it and feed on it. Very common, very common. They're found all over the US. And this is the male. Now the male is, when I took this photograph, the male was just above the, the female in this photo here and uh, waiting for an opportunity. Um, spiders, they, a lot of times they'll wait until the female is uh, busy, maybe feeding or something, and then move in to mate because that's the safest time for the spider to do it. Other times the spider will, uh, has long, long pedipalps and will tickle the, uh, the female on the head and then she'll respond and then they'll mate and, and he'll move away uh, so he doesn't become the next meal. So that's that. Now this spider is also the one that's uh, said to be a recluse more often than every other spider that's out there. Um, I get photographs of these all the time. Uh, is this a recluse spider? And the way you can tell, of course, the long pedipalps there, right there, it's actually folded if she, if he was to, unfolded it would be that long so um and it has uh, eight eyes so that's the one right there and i got a video for y'all All right, you may have seen this pretty much, it's a large spider. It's got, the leg span could be five inches long. And what we're talking about is the giant crab spider. It's also called a huntsman spider. Now this is all over the US as well. Uh, in the cooler climates, they stay pretty much exclusively in the structure. They are ferocious when it comes to feeding on the large cockroaches, the American cockroaches, the smoky browns, you know, or any other roach that comes inside the house, they, uh, they're hunters, uh, they, they do not build a web. They see an insect they want, they run and grab it. They're very fast. You'll see them on the walls and everything else. And that's what that looks like right there. That is actually a male huntsman spider. And there's another male. I was taking this photograph. This was outside down in Ocala. And while I was photographing him, uh, it jumped out of my lens and jumped and grabbed this June bug. And so I, perfect opportunity. Notice that, you know, these spiders are smart. This spider actually tucked its head underneath the wing pad, which it would have had some difficulty penetrating with its fangs and went right into the, uh, uh, the thorax abdomen area of this uh, uh, June bug. So that gives you an idea on the size of these guys there. They're pretty good size. Now I'm gonna just show you some spiders that are found around the outside. Um, and um, these are the spiders that, uh, that I think customers should tolerate because they're away from the house. Uh, the only thing that they have to do is make sure they don't walk through their webbing. These spiders are doing a very, very good job of you know, keeping uh, certain insects down in yards. And um, I tolerate them. I, I get go, the uh, uh, golden orb weaver here all the time and I just leave them be. And I just make sure I don't walk through their webbing. Uh, it, it's just, uh, you know, let, let mother nature do its thing. So this is a yellow garden spider. 
Uh, it's a beautiful spider and the web is quite big. They make this big orb, uh, as I said, and it's just a good spider to have around. And there's some others that are related to this one as well, but they pretty much look close. They resemble each other. And this is a spotted orb weaver. It makes a big web as well. And uh, once again, a good spider to have around. Uh, a lot of times they'll build their webs in between shrubbery where you have a gap. And the reason why they put it there is because they know that that is a traffic area. That's where flying insects are going to go. Now, some of these will actually build their webs at night and, um, and then take them down early morning and, uh, and go rest underneath a leaf or some bark and then rebuild their nest at nighttime, I mean, their web at nighttime, waiting for these insects to fly through. So I get these around here all the time as well. This one is a marbled uh, orb weaver. This is pretty common uh, north of, uh, you know, Florida. We don't have them here, but northern Georgia, northern Alabama, up into Tennessee and the Carolinas and all that area. These are night webbers. These will build their big web at nighttime. And, uh, and once again, in a, an area where they know that there's traffic. And uh, a lot of times it'll be not too far away from a house where there's an outside light. Because uh, remember what happens at nighttime, lights draw in insects. So these insects that are going towards that light, that web may be somewhere in between that. And the insect will get stuck in there. And next thing you know, you've got yourself a, uh, uh, some food. So uh, it's a good idea to try and talk your customers into not worrying about the, these. This is a orchard orb weaver, another one that makes a web. It's a pretty spider. The, uh, the uh, abdomen is kind of uh, neon looking, and these are fairly common as well. Uh, ghost and sack spiders, they have a reputation of being uh, of medical concern. They are not. Uh, you know, somebody gets bitten by one, could they react poorly? Yeah, like any bite from an arthropod, pod, it depends on the person. Another uh, uh, sack spider or, or uh, what I, ghost spider, sorry about that. Here's another one. Now I'm just showing you these right now, uh, just to give you an idea of spiders that will hang around. Now, one thing about these, these love to hang around vehicles. Uh, I find these crawling on my Jeep and my wife's pilot all the time. On occasion, I'll find them on the camper. Uh, they just love hanging around vehicles for some reason. So this is that white spider you see crawling across your dash or across your windshield uh, a lot of times in your car. Jumping spiders, very common. These guys have these two big eyes. And if they see a fly and they jump to it, They'll grab it. So here's a jumping spider, another jumping spider. You can see the two eyes there. And uh, here's a, a beautiful, this thing's gorgeous, and another jumping spider. So these are the ones that hang around your windows and outside or inside. And the reason why they hang around your windows is because that's where the flies are. Your house flies, when they come in, they always seem to go to a window. And these, these, these spiders are smart enough to know that, and that's where they grab these flies, and house flies especially. And wolf spiders, there you go. These are very common. One thing about wolf spiders, when they get into a house, they're pretty much going to, uh, they're gonna die, you know, usually within uh, 48 hours or so. So I'm just gonna go through these real quick. That's the eye pattern of a wolf spider, really neat. Uh, wolf spider, female carrying her egg sac. And uh, uh, another wolf spider with the babies on the abdomen. There's another shot of that. And a fishing spider. And a quick video. And it ran off. So anyway, I, I'm going to skip this part and just go here real quick. That is a uh, uh, what you call a uh, harvestman spider, or it's really not even a spider. Notice that the body is one piece. Everything is in one piece. It's more related to a crab than a spider, and they do not have venom. 
and I know that popular belief is that they do. Here's another shot of one, it only has two sets of eyes. So, okay, um, just real quick, when it comes to uh, control, uh, spiders, uh, there's, there's a bunch of products out there. Make sure you use your, your Webster to knock down the webbing. Um, and I'm not gonna get too much into the control of it all, but um, uh, these, pretty much these are the spiders that you will deal with out there. Real quick, I'm gonna end it with this little funny video. I hope you enjoy. And that was a fishing spider. So that's it. I'm done.